Today is August 24th. Uh, I am interviewing Ed Deloinis at Norwalk Community College in Norwalk, Connecticut. The interviewer is Caleb Pittman, working with Central Connecticut State University. Also pre present is Patricia Deloinis, his wife. Uh, Ed, uh, could you please state your full name and city and state uh, in which you live for the record? Edward Adam Deloinis. And city and state in which you live? Uh, Norwalk. Connecticut. Okay. Uh, and which war did you serve? Which war? Yeah. I, I served a... a, a uh, I joined the Navy. I enlisted in the Navy. And uh, I, then I was called back after I served that, that about two-year period that I served at that point. And... Uh, uh, then I was, I joined the, uh, at the prompting of Uncle Sam, uh, he asked if uh, I would serve in the uh, reserve when I was discharged at my first uh, tour of duty. And uh, I volunteered. I said, sure, I'd like to belong to that. And lo and behold, they uh, needed me at Korea. They called me back. I went back uh, in, at, at a late, later point uh, uh, in the Korean. I didn't, I didn't serve overseas. I well, I, I served all the uh, sort of the, the Atlantic Ocean and uh, Caribbean, South at South Atlantic uh, generally. You want me to continue that uh, that? Line of oh uh, yeah go ahead yeah yeah because I uh, I uh, originally uh, I I, uh, I knew I grew up uh, as a kid uh, the, the, when when the war started I was uh, because uh, you, you couldn't belong to to any of the services until you're 17 years old. Uh, uh, I, I wanted desperately to be a part of the, uh, all the excitement of the war because all my friends were in the uh, services, uh, and, and I wanted to be a part of that too. And I'm, uh, I'm a patriotic sort of guy, and so I was very anxious, and I had no opportunity to get into it. I was too young. Uh, I got. I, I was about. Well, at sixteen. Uh, that's a year before I would be able to join the, uh, uh, the service in any way. Uh, uh, no, I, 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 yeah. I'm trying to. Uh, at, at sixteen. Uh, I went to work in a, in a uh, actually a, a war-related uh, factory, Pitney Bowes in Stanford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, I eventually, uh, well, I started a uh, apprenticeship program uh, at Pitney Bowes at 16 years old, and uh, because I wanted to get into something like that. And I knew I was going to get into the service. So at 17, uh, when I turned 17, I, I went into the Navy and I, I uh, joined it uh, uh, voluntarily. So what made you decide on the Navy? Uh, I, I particularly like the Navy. Uh, it's just a sort of liking Rather than the, being a soldier, I thought that I'd get to see the world more with mm -hmm. being in the Navy. So, well, and I made the right choice. Except that they didn't, the, the government, or when I did get it into the service, uh, I went not, uh, through the uh, basic training, the boot training, and, uh, and then I went to a service school uh, 
they were both about three months long each. So uh, I, I now I'm losing my track here. <laughs> so you went to service school? Yeah. Oh, oh, the service school, yes. And then after that, I, I got into the, uh, get into the, uh, got, I got assigned to a ship. And it took about, my gosh, about a, two, about a month to get to the ship because of all the uh, uh, logistics of moving me from uh, wh where I was at the time. Uh, uh, the service sends you to a lot of different places. My gosh, I went to Puerto Rico, I went, I went, I went uh, all over. And my uh, objective was uh, to meet my ship up in uh, Cuba. Uh, so I really didn't have any uh, 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 active, well, what, what do you call it, what, do you, what would you call the, uh, I wasn't in a, exposed to the, the, so the war area. You weren't in combat? Direct combat. Right. I, I, didn't, I didn't have direct contact. Although... Uh, when I finally did get settled on my ship. And my ship was a minesweeper. Okay. Now a minesweeper is a, uh, a little different than the regular Navy because it's, uh, it deals with small craft. It, we, we, we don't have any big ships in, in, the mine, mine, uh, in the mine business because it's uh, got to have the, the ship's got to have a lot of agility, and uh, uh, we we most of our work is coastal. You know the sweeping of mines during the war. Uh, every harbor, every harbor in the United States was mined so as to uh, protect the, uh, 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 the opposition from uh, occupying it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we were a part of that. So, I was just, because of my time, I really didn't, I came into the service, I, I was very young, but the war was almost over by the time I got there. So I did uh, our minesweeper, uh, which is a, uh, it, it, it saw a lot of work during the war, the mine sweep. There's not much mine sweeping because the the mines set are set in the water in such a manner that uh, you uh, the enemy couldn't penetrate it without running into the danger of exploding a mine. But there's one path for natural commerce and uh, ships to come ships that should be serving uh, any of the ports. Uh, so, so that actually during the war there's there's not much mine sweeping. Right, okay. So uh, what was your... It was my big my big tour of duty was to be on a ship after the war was over, okay. and that ship happened to be the minesweeper, and minesweeping, of course, the end of the war opened up all that work 
-hmm. of cleaning all these mines out, the thousands of mines that are planted all throughout the uh, United States. Uh, yeah. So it was it was a uh, hectic and uh, it was a, a interesting. Minesweepers are small. The and they're, they're sort of a, 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 a separate part of the service because they're uh, most of the crews on the, the minesweepers and on my ship, uh, I, where our crew was about 50, 55 uh, sailors, uh, and we were all different ranks. I was a gunner's mate. I went to gunner's mate school. That's that was that was a three month uh, period of education uh, coming into the navy, so that uh, uh, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking. Uh, I, I, well, I mean, you can tell me about what was like the average day for you when you were serving on that ship. The average day? Yeah. What was it? Well, well, I, I guess uh, because the. Um, Ships are so small, the crews are small, and uh, they get uh, everybody knows pretty much everybody else's job, and you find out that the cook could be the, the chief cook, could be the best uh, steerer of the ship because he. he gets that opportunity to do it. He's not He's ju not just cooking, but he's got other, and that, that goes for all the rates. I was a gunner's mate, and, and I was, I guess I did more painting, and... Uh, <laughs> so everyone had a lot of jobs Rather than to guns. So, it's a very versatile uh, uh, rating. But uh, interesting. Okay. So I went through the uh, the school and I got assigned, and I was a seaman. I'm, I'm brand new to the Navy, and it was exciting. We, our, our our area of operation is uh, was in the South Atlantic, and mostly down in all of those nice countries, uh, you know, going down. Well, our, our home port was uh, the port of Spain, Trinidad. And uh, that was a great place. The water around it was great. But we worked like heck uh, with the sweeping. Once the war was over, so that really I didn't have too much experience from the time I came into the Navy and uh, I was working at my rating uh, and the war ended and uh, then we got to do all the mine sweeping in that area that I told you, that, that um, uh, South, South Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. And we did a lot of it. We worked like we'd go out for two weeks at a time and uh, stay out all the time. And mine sweeping is a uh, very mechanical and uh, uh, it involves a lot of uh, cables mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a very complex sort of thing. And, and that's why the, the that part of the navy, the uh, just like any other part that's that is working to a specific uh, conclusion, uh, it it was a, a, a very very uh, as I say I, I steered the ship uh, through all kinds of weather and along with all, all the other guys. It was a unique experience. Okay. Um, do you have any interesting stories about, um, you know, that time? Well, I couldn't swim when I went in the Navy, and uh, 
I went to Sampson, New York, and that's where the uh, recruit training was. It's a, it's a big operation up in the, the Adirondacks of New York. So I took the, I had to swim. Mm -hmm. And they generally just told you, jump in. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and there, was, there was no, 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 no instructor that really, you know, here's the form you use. Just, it, it comes natural. Yeah. At the yeah. end of my uh, career uh, in the Navy, uh, there was some time left over that I had to serve. The ship I first went on, it gets confusing because of these ships. That's why I'm trying to separate uh, the two different dates that I was in the Navy and where I was at the time. They're, they're both going back to the very beginning, I, went, I was in the Navy twice, and most of the time it was all in the Atlantic Ocean. But my out. swimming, I learned to swim, and then eventually in my career, I was assigned to be an instructor of swimming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and where? It was at Yale University. <laughs> they had a V-12 program at the Yale University and there were all these uh, young officers were being trained there. And uh, I guess uh, in the confusion of the, of the completion of the war, everybody was sort of mixed up. I was uh, here I, uh, I was, I'm a novice uh, swimmer, and I'm I'm in charge of the whole department, and I, I, I that's that's really the way the war was ending up, uh, picking up the pieces. It's quite unusual, okay. but it was interesting. That's the uh, I I didn't see action, but I got wounded. <laughs> okay. what happened? And that's when I was uh, on this uh, assignment of uh, being an instructor of swimming at Yale University. And uh, we were having tough times. Uh, the, the war was over and uh, we were all through with wine sweeping and we were just sort of setting it out. Uh, uh, and and uh, I was uh, I was at a uh, a party. It was a uh, sort of a beach party at Yale University in, in their golf course. They had the pool, and, and I stepped on a, a broken bottle, <laughs> and I cut my the arch of my oh. foot a bit. It wasn't serious at all. It was just mm. just a laceration. And, Cut that, and uh, it had to be naturally bandaged up, and I had to, I had to treat it carefully. And, and from that experience, I walked out, and in my uniform, and, and I, I had a room up in uh, New Haven at the time. Uh, everywhere I went, I had to limp. And I got more attention. <laughs> Everybody thought, oh, there's that poor sailor, and he's limping along, and he must be wounded. And I hate to tell them I stepped on a beer bottle at a yeah. party. <laughs> College kids understand that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, really. Um, so, do you have, like, any interesting stories from when you were sweeping mines, like, taking care of that, any not, interesting uh, situations? Well, mines, uh, are, you, are you familiar with mines at all? Not, no, not no, at all. Not really. No, but you, you know that they're, I, they're, they're round, a big 
Yeah, big, yeah. Big round ball, and they have little things sticking out of it. I thought. I thought just as an example. This is a vine uh, has these sticking out. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the things that would stick out. Yeah. Okay. Envision a ball about that diameter, and then you have these things sticking out all around the mine, mm -hmm. so that when a ship hits this and bends it over, this goes down and hits another plate that's underneath it, and at that contact triggers the explosion. Triggers the explosion of the mine, mm -hmm. meaning a ship actually hit it and you, uh, that's why uh, yeah. dangerous uh, 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 the mines are dangerous they don't know what their who their who their enemy is right they? right um, but it's but that's an interesting little uh, souvenir that I brought okay the mines I, I love the, the Navy we had a that was our emblem the mine. Yeah. And that dig sort of dignify us with what our service was. Was it ever dangerous, uh, diffusing them? The work was hard and dangerous because the ships are aligned in some such a way that uh, when they're do uh, actually sweeping they're sort of staggered and there's just a bit of room between them and the mechanism that actually uh, ignites the these things uh, they uh, there's a lot of room for accidents and you uh, and a ship can cut in this arrangement. Uh, a ship just ahead of you can cut a mine, and it pops up right in front of your ship. Mm -hmm. So you got to have that maneuverability to get the ship out of the way so it doesn't hit the mine. Yeah. So I mean, there is that exposure, and that does happen. So, but there. And then there's a variety of mines too. Mines that are sensitive to noise that will explode the mine. This is a contact mine, which is the most popular mine. Yeah. So how long did it take to diffuse a mine? How long does it take? Yeah, for to, each one. Well, uh, Actually, you're saying to to clean like a minefield. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, a minefield you can you can it can be big, it can be small, so mm -hmm. that the, the time is uh, uh, measured against uh, the size. Okay. Of the of the minefield itself. So generally, did you deal with the more, did you deal with a lot of big ones or mostly small ones? Uh, or did it vary a lot? My, uh, generally, when, when you're dealing like uh, with this type of, the, the ball type that sits in the water just under the surface of the water, it's anchored to the bottom with a cable. There's an anchor on the bottom, and that ank that that chain is built so that, or the distance from the anchor where it sits on the bottom of the, the ocean, uh, that 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 has to. Uh, y y 
you can't you can't just look at the water and say, well, here's the minefield. That's okay, what I'm so you, getting at. You just do they it don't by... float on top of the water. They got no yeah. flags or anything. Mm -hmm. it, you never know where a mine's going to be, except you know that that area is mined. Okay. And that's part of the game. <laughs> so you just kind of go as you see the mines. Well, you have to go from in that formation uh, of ships when, when, when the mine sweeper, mine sweeper is actually doing its job it's cutting the cable so that the mine bobs up to the top of the water and then they shoot that penetrate it put holes in it and it sinks to the bottom Okay. And it stays there. There's a lot of mines <laughs> at the okay. bottom of the sea. So that's generally uh, how that happens. Okay. But were there any, were there any ever were there ever any accidents when you were mine sweeping? Uh, no, uh, no, really. Uh, we're lucky. Yeah, yeah, we avoided that. Yeah. Okay. But it was, it's, it's dirty work, it's a lot of cables, it's a, a lot of handling. Uh, I, uh, as I say, uh, a port of mine, uh, minesweepers, uh, most minesweepers, are, all, all the crew pretty much knows generally what's happening. which is different from the Navy. Uh, the regular Navy, when you belong to the gunner's department, the gunnery department, uh, in, in, uh, almost anywhere. You, you, uh, the Army, the uh, other parts of the Navy, they're all in departments or com compartments. Uh, the minesweepers are the people uh, have experience in almost anything and everything. Uh, okay. So it's spread out. That's how unique it is. Yeah. So uh, did you stay in touch with your family while you were uh, serving? Uh, only by mail. Okay. Your mother. Only by mail. And, and when, when you're 17, you know, you... Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember those days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, just away from home. It was a great experience, really. It, 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 I met so many wonderful people. Uh, I've had contact with somebody all through the years. Uh, uh, one of my companions uh, from, from the uh, mines, from our ships. But uh, that, that there's a tendency to, of course, uh, that it dissipates itself. Mm -hmm. So we did uh, we did our work there. Then we decommissioned the ship uh, at the end of the war, and uh, everything was at the end. Like we tossed everything away in the ocean. <laughs> mm -hmm. The ocean's a load of crap. <laughs> it still is. Well, um, so, so I served my duty in the uh, in the World War Two, mm -hmm. and then, uh, as I say, I joined the reserves and the reserves reactivated me during the Korean War and for some reason uh, we trained ourselves in I, I was on another minesweeper a, diff, a different one actually going back into the Navy uh, it was a little larger ship and when I say larger I mean I'm talking about a uh, 150, 150 foot long ship, and uh, the one I 
first went in, uh, that ship was about 120 long. So I was on a real small ship to begin with in World War II, and uh, I, I, I graduated into the uh, larger one that That we, we we really didn't have um, uh, it, it, the second time in during the Korean War, uh, my uh, port, uh, my uh, home port was uh, actually in Charleston, South Carolina, and I spent most of my time in Charleston, South Carolina, because. Uh, there was nothing else happening. I guess they didn't need to. So were you still doing mine sweeping at that time? Oh yeah. 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 The second one was it was uh, both ships were minesweepers, two different sizes. Okay. But uh, it was a great, uh, great experience. But but the second time in, it was uh, really it was a waste of time. But but. Nonetheless, uh, I guess we were the, like the ready reserve, mm -hmm. and they didn't necessarily mean need minesweepers. So I I stayed at Charleston, South Carolina, and we went. We made a lot of cruises around, just cruising, really patrolling, and so not much action at all. In fact, I. I got very bored at one point, and uh, my ships, uh, I was in a Minecraft uh, sort of a complex, so there's piles and piles of all these minesweepers that they weren't using, and they all had, we were waiting out the war, but whether we would go to Korea or not. It, we didn't uh, go to Korea. Mm -hmm. We stayed in Charleston. And I kept looking around. I, I see some, there was there was a uh, squadron that was going out, and uh, they were going to the Mediterranean, which is very colorful. It's a nice place to visit. Mm -hmm. The war wasn't really there. Uh, the Korean War wasn't there, yeah. but that they, they had minesweepers, and they. Uh, I was familiar with what was going to happen. They were going to take a portion of the minesweepers, and send them over to the Mediterranean and for for patrol duty, and uh, I thought, well, gee, that's I might find somebody that wants to transfer off of their ship onto my ship mm -hmm. and I get swapped. You, the, you, you could request that. And if it's not uh, that much trouble, they'll do it for you. And uh, uh, So I was ready to do it, and, but then I, I just said, well, I better not. I, I got it pretty good here. Why push it? Mm -hmm. So that squadron went out, and their key ship was the Wasp, which is a huge uh, uh, aircraft carrier. Okay. Uh, they, they, it's, they, there's still a Wasp, not the one from that point, but there is still a, a, a active uh, on active duty. Mm -hmm. uh, but they went out. Uh, they left, uh, that squadron left from Charleston with the objective of getting uh, a new location, but, but, but they had a maneuver that uh, I was about to apply for transfer to it because uh, I, I wanted I wanted to do something 
and to see the world. Yeah. But lo and behold, that sweeper that I would have been on actually was cut in half by the wasp. The our ships, I, I told you, they're all very small. Mm -hmm. The wasp, you know, sits up towering over it. Yeah. And they were maneuvering in the Caribbean. And uh, I, they actually cut the ship in half and had a big loss of men. And oh, wow. it, it went with a big failure. And I wasn't on it. So, so I, yeah, Charleston was standby. Still I did a lot of shore patrol work. That's shore patrol is uh, like the Navy uh, police. Yeah, the old sailors never so died. It right? was. So, um, do you have any interesting stories from that, from shore patrol? Or is it just. But really, uh, I think they. The greatest part is the meeting all the different people that I met, and the friendships that were all in the same boat, and uh, they flourished. Friendships flourished. Okay. So it was a good experience. Yeah. All in all. So uh, we worked hard. Uh, we we got during the first war, or, or I should say the second world war. The, was my active part. Okay. Were you in Charleston when your service ended uh, in the Korean War? Yes, yes. Just transferred out. Yeah. Okay. So you uh, did you just come back up to Connecticut when you were discharged? Mm -hmm. We didn't, uh, you know, it's not like the Second World War where we got rid of everything. Okay. <laughs> they didn't give him a parade. Yeah, he came back to Stanford. I'm uh, helping him out because he came here. And still with Pitney Bowes, and he worked 42 years with Pitney Bowes, okay. which was the postage meters. Yeah, he was with them, retired from them. But I had a, uh, I was down to, actually, I, I consider I, I, had a lim I had a limited uh, experience in the service, you know, good. Uh, getting assigned to the ship I did. And, uh, I didn't have the, I'm not, I'm not a big warrior, but I, I, I just, in two years time, this listing here is all the ports that we stopped. Oh, okay. This, this is my log. <laughs> It's a, it's a... Okay, so did you make this during your service? You just kept track of everything? Yeah. I kept this pad. This is a writing pad, and I, I just kept that, and I don't know, I put, put where I've been, the, the, the uh, my friends, uh, different uh, people that I met, and so okay. that's my log. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've never seen that, thank God. <laughs> I've never seen that. It's hidden. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Keep it hidden. <laughs> um, so I, I, I did see the world. Yeah. I did. So, um, what's that? Did, um, how do you think the military affected your thinking throughout your life? Uh, or how did it affect your life? As you know. Well, the different people I met, I mean, the experiences of, of uh, and, and of course, uh, the, uh, there's always something happening. I mean, so, 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 I didn't, I don't have a, uh, I have a, a great feeling for patriotism and, uh, you know, what it stands for and the challenges of that, that go with uh, maintaining a strong uh, service. 
And you so think it was that a, all in all, it was an excellent experience, growing experience. It was wonderful. Yeah, okay. That, uh, I think, is what you're searching for. Yeah, uh, so it was a good experience for you. Yeah. Um, do you think it affected your thinking, like, later in life, uh, you know, decisions you well, made later? Well, right now, I mean, oh my gosh, I'm 92. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of experiences in my life with... Even, we talked about uh, uh, my, my very, uh, uh, my youth, when I heard my, my first job with Pitney Bowes. Well, I stayed with Pitney Bowes, which is a postage meter company. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. And uh, it's, uh, it's sort of in, in demise right now. But the company was very, very uh, prosperous, and we were very much in advance. And so that was a great experience, tied in with that. So I had a good life. Okay. That's I, good. Did you ever attend any reunions, uh, military reunions? No. Yeah. Our ships are so small. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we have nothing much to draw upon. Uh, I mean, uh, like I say, I made some great friends, and like any other experience, that uh, life goes on and, and uh, things change, attitudes change. Uh, Ever met the mayor of Norwalk, Harry Willing? No. Well, we were down at the Memorial Day Parade. Women at Memorial Day Parade, you know, we just sat around the corner, and Harry was the first with his wife, and, Mar and we, we have met them. We've had lunch with them and all. And he sees Ed, and there's all these bands coming. They go, he's at, pointing at him. World War Two, World War Two, as if there's there's <laughs> not many left. <laughs> World uh, War Two. <yeah. laughs> you, dear. <laughs> no, it's true. World War Two is. There's still some people around yeah. in their 90s. So is there any other anything else you want to say that hasn't been covered in this interview? No. No? All right. Um, well, I'd like to thank you for your service and uh, for taking the time to be interviewed today.